Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to our channel. This is going to be the introduction of the RX-7, which is right here. Part in the messy garage. I have it stored in my parents' yard right now because um, they actually have a yard that I could like work on the car. All the tools are here and stuff. Um, the car is very loud, so it's where we keep it and this is where we work on it. I'm going to be, uh, you know, giving you a breakdown of, of what this car has so far and uh, you know what are what the things are that we plan on doing to it in the future it's a JDM 13B turbo S5 and uh, let me just show you some goodies on it before we get into the details I hope you guys could see brightened it up a bit so check it out and this is my first vlog guys so I know how to do photography and shit but you know video is really different with a DSLR you gotta adjust a lot of things all the time some spots are have more shade than others you gotta adjust so there's tons of reasons not to vlog had this car for a long time wasn't gonna do it but been feeling inspired lately and a lot of rotaries are going up on YouTube I've had this for a while you know you guys like RX-7s I'm gonna share been selfish for a while figure I start sharing with you guys too uh, work on this shit all the time there's always things to do so I'll include you alright guys so the motor's a 13B turbo S5 from Japan. Came with the full truss turbo kit. That includes the turbo manifold, Gretti Type R wastegate, and the TD06 turbo, as well as a 3 inch downpipe. Start off with exhaust. I'm going to go through the mods. The exhaust is uh, the 3 inch downpipe off the turbo. You got the wastegate dump tube, or whatever it's called. And then I got a custom made uh, 3 inch exhaust all the way from the downpipe down to the back to a single exit muffler. It's a Gretti TD06 Turbo. The motor came with some really cool goodies. One of them being it has three spark plugs per housing. All right. Normally rotaries have two spark plugs per housing. This has three. So I bought the motor. Before I got it installed, went ahead and got it rebuilt right away. All right, when we opened the motor up, I was there and uh, the motor was perfect. It was like if someone already rebuilt it in Japan at some point, no issues at all, but um, still rebuilt it anyways, changed the bearings, changed everything to be safe. It had the OEM Mazda Apex seals, which are two piece. And if that blows, you know, if you get a motor rebuilt with stock Apex seals, they're not bad, but they're two piece. So when they blow, they're gonna damage things inside your motor. Therefore, the next time you rebuild your motor, you absolutely will have to buy a bunch of other parts that are expensive, like your housings and the rotors, they get trashed. So use other Apex. Oh, well, let me, excuse me. So when we uh, got the motor rebuilt, got it street ported as well. Okay, street ported, we studded the block. It's a small street port. Um, brand new RA Super Seals for the Apex Seals. So we got the FD upper intake manifold. Okay, we've got a four Taurus, the big V6. I think it's a 3.8 liter from the 90s. Upgraded to that alternator, 130 amps. So it's really strong. The reason we got that is because we have a four Taurus from the same year electric fan which is ridiculously strong it's a common mod with rx7s i mean it was i don't know about nowadays i don't really see that shit no more but got the taurus fan on there got the taurus alternator 130 amps so it gets plenty of juice had to customize a few things to do it but it's done and um got the walbro 450 in there um and another thing about this motor since it's the s5 FC motor but it's the later generation of the FC it's the S5 instead of the S4 so the rotors are high compression compared to the S4 turbo motor 
So this motor actually has the same um, rotors and basically for the most part it's like the FD motor. You know, they use these rotors and the same concept on the FD. So this car is a really good car. Um, it's pretty hard to find. A lot of people have S4 turbos out there. This is a S5, so I had to jump on that deal when I saw it. Uh, got a custom V-mount intercooler set up by the builder who built the car, um, who rebuilt the car, you know, after I bought it. Like I said, we didn't really need a rebuild or anything. He threw the V-mount on there. Um, there are a couple things that this car had when it came from Japan that are for heat management. Builder didn't keep them on there, and now I'm kind of regretting it that it's summertime in Miami. I need those... Uh, those heat shields that the Japanese guy had made around the turbo is really cool. So uh, anyhow, I, let me stop getting off track. So we got the custom V-mount intercooler set up. 1000 cc injectors, both the primaries and the secondaries. Um, we got the magnesium pulleys that came from Japan, they're big. and. Uh, like I said, each rotor housing has three spark plugs instead of two, which is very rare. Never seen that in my life. You can't Google it. It's only Japanese letters. If you know how to read Japanese, you can look it up. There was a shop in the 90s doing that in Japan. It might have been feed. So we got those uh, housings on here. So technically this is the rarest RX-7 in the world or in the US. Probably, probably in the US for sure. Because why? It's uh, convertible, so it's rare off rip. Second, has a, it's a turbo convertible. You know, in the US they didn't come turbo at all. So this is a turbo convertible. It's a S5 turbo. It has a trust full turbo kit, which you can't even find anymore. You can't find that turbo manifold anymore. Um, and it's got three spark plug spark plugs per housing. So it's a fully built convertible RX-7. It's got the Adaptronic ECU on there, standalone. Um, it is tuned, 16 pounds. You guys write in the comments how much you think, uh, how much power to the wheels you think we made. I have the dyno, she is not, not bullshitting, you know, like a lot of people say they make X amount of, if somebody ever tells me they got blank horsepower, not to the wheels like they just say oh I got horsepower or if they say like blank horsepower or close to or around like you don't know how much your car has like you probably got like a hundred horsepower less than you think you do so this comment how much horsepower you think this car made to the wheels comment the torque I might upload a video of the dyno not sure yet um, but I have it I have everything so you guys comment and uh, Let's see how close you guys can get and I'll post in the next video who got it right. Or I'll just reply to you in the comments. I'll reply who got the who got the closest. So um let's see guys. Bear with me. It's my first time filming. It's hard to stay on track. I'm just gonna keep going. So Adaptronic CCU, it's tuned. Uh Walbro 450. It's got a when I get the when we did the motor swap. And the rebuild, figured I'd change the clutch and uh, while the motor's off. So I got an ACT street strip clutch with the pressure plate and all that. I've used it before and I love how it feels, so just put it on there again and it's totally fine. Um, before the swap, I already did coilovers, uh, four brand new Falcon tires, changed the brake pads and the, the rotors. I got slotted rotors on there, changed the brake fluid. Um, the alignment is fine, all the suspension in the front is fine. Still stock everything, you know, as far as, aside from the coilovers, the suspension is stock. I did change the differential mounts and bushings because they went bad on this car. So that was like probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Take out the diff without removing the subframe and swapping all the bushings and all that. Honestly, since I've done that, I don't think anything's hard anymore because that shit was hard. So. It's, um, I custom made this little uh, panel right here. I made that. It's not the best, but it works. I made that. Um, it's a V-mount, so you can see that. 
under the car. There's also a little plate right here. I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, there you go. So we got that, and I got the top one to let the air flow better. Walbro 450 fuel pump. Um, you know, aftermarket fuel pressure regulator. A few things here and there. Um, also got the, I removed AC, but I kept the um, power steering. Got a built to apex power steering bracket to lower it. It's a nice uh, powder coated like gunmetal color. So I'm running power steering, but no AC, and that allows us to run a clean V-mount uh, pipe instead of having to do, you know, try and work around the power steering around here somewhere. So I've replaced, guys, honestly, I've replaced so much on this car. I've had the car for maybe four or five years. Had the turbo motor in there for about a year or two. We had it sitting in the shop for about a year and a half before it finally got installed into the car and we drove it. And honestly, I haven't even put 2,000 miles on it yet, guys. There's always something going on with this damn car. So just know if you're in the market for a car and you're young and you got that fever for cars and you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't jump into sports cars that are old. Like, don't get an old car. It's better to have a modern car that works and gets you where you need to go so you can make your money to live your life and grow rather than buying sporty cars that are gonna break and your life revolves around fixing it and you never grow and the world grows around you while you stay in the same place and then you're not gonna be happy in the future just because you were into cars too soon. So, it is what it is. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, keep an eye out on the channel. I'm gonna start uploading more. This video wasn't the best. It was just an introductory to the RX-7 and to me vlogging. So I'll try to improve guys. You know, thanks for watching the video. If you stuck all the way through, thank you for being patient. And um, the videos will get better. You know, I'm gonna, we'll make better content. But I'm not gonna tell you everything we're doing yet because that's gonna be in the next video. I'm gonna try to see how much I can vlog and try and be consistent with it and give you updates, drive the car, uh, introduce you to my girlfriend and her BMW that we work on as well and bring you guys along for the trip, all right? Enjoy, comment below, and uh, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Take care, guys. See the FD manifold here? This car needs uh, a good detail, which I haven't done on it yet, because I've been wanting to film it for YouTube. That's like, you know, I've, I've been saving that basically to film it with and share that with you guys so you could see the before and after and have some content for you so stay tuned for that all right give you a shot of the outside it's overexposed but um we're gonna be uh detailing this baby and making it look a lot nicer and i'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride just filming so you guys can get an idea of all the things that i listed on the car you know, I spoke about it and only filmed myself, so it's just a little bit of a brighter shot, you know, as best as I could, just to show you a little bit. And we also got the uh, Gretti Type RZ blow-off valve, which is pretty rare in itself. It's like a gunmetal black color instead of uh, like blue or purple and the other colors that they bring.